And I think it's that lack of education through the state growing up uh, that has meant there's, there's a huge sway of the society that, that were left to educate themselves as, as to what had happened. Once they learn and understand um, their history, uh, means all commemorations are a bit more acceptable. Nineteen sixteen means quite a few things. Uh, I suppose my first memory of nineteen sixteen or, or the significance of it was probably from that 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 line from the song "The Green Fields of France." Uh, we had the tape by the Fury Brothers, which we played on our holidays, uh, where he said, "When you joined the Great Falling Fallen in nineteen sixteen." And as I was growing up, we always thought 1916 was Dublin. Um, but over the years, we've come to realise that, you know, 1916, 1912, 1914, 1918, this whole decade is extremely important to us. Um, the events in Dublin, I suppose, for me, mark the start of that period that ended up with the formation of Northern Ireland. Um, I suppose as an old unionist that is something I should welcome. Uh, but looking back historically, uh, I probably would have preferred that the whole island of Ireland would have stayed with the United Kingdom. And I suppose today, following Brexit, everything's up in the air, everything's up for debate. And the whole United Kingdom, the whole Europe is in a huge state of flux. 1916 as a year for a unionist, um, or a typical unionist, is probably more about the Battle of the Somme uh, and the 1st of July than it is about the events of Easter 1916. Um, I would imagine the community I represent probably see the events of Easter 1916 as a threat. Uh, some, some people might see it as a precursor to the the IRA and the Troubles and all of that, and, and may see a direct connection. Um, but I think in general they would tend to disregard it um, and, and focus more on what uh, thousands of men from right across the of Ireland did in, in, in the First World War, and in particular the Battle of the Song. Listening to and understanding other people's views and opinions uh, has helped shape what I think of it. Uh, I don't have a very narrow view of 1916. Uh, I respect and appreciate how other people view it. Um, I, I appreciate how others look at the Easter Rising uh, as being the most significant part of that year. Uh, and I do, but I, I accept that it's a very significant event in the history of the end of Ireland and what it brought about. What shaped my views? I think probably my parents to an extent, uh, my, how I was brought up um, and what I learnt at school or the lack of what I learnt at school really uh, and probably more more or less in recent years um, as the decade, decade of centenaries have come about, society as a whole has, has recognised how important this decade was going to be, uh, how uh, its potential conflict or how, how it was celebrated had, 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 the, had the chance of causing major disruption. Um, but I think probably one of my regrets and, and one of my criticisms is the lack of education uh, we received at school around modern history. <laughs> the way things have been marked right across so far um, I don't think have led to much conflict. Um, I'm not saying they've been perfect uh, in any shape or form, but I think uh, the vast majority of them have been uh, historical, uh, have been about reenacting what, what had happened. Um, and I think the fact that it has 
been able to pass off peacefully has shown that Northern Ireland has moved on. Um, I think I think what I've learned in the last month is is the importance of of remembering. Um, I made a decision two years ago that I would bring my wife and my two children to France for the first of July. I made that decision because I was over forty whenever I first made the trip, and I had no real. Uh, concept of the enormity of, of what had taken place out there and what was out there physically and I didn't want my children to wait until they were 40 before they made the decision themselves to go so I, I brought I brought them with me uh, now one of them the one's 10 and one's 8 they may not remember it that well but at least they can say I was in France on the 1st of July 2016 but I also my, my in-laws came with me both of whom are over 70 and they found it a very moving experience and I think when somebody of that age uh, and that amount of life experience finds marking the centenary of the Battle of the Somme a very moving experience, not just on the 1st of July, but also going to the Manning Gate and, and all of that, I think made me realise that how important it is that we do mark events in general and show that we do remember and appreciate the sacrifices people have made over the years. When I was the mayor of Craigavon, uh, for some unknown reason, and it's still unknown to me, uh, on the Thursday before Armistice Day in 2014, I received an invitation from uh, Francois Hollande to attend the opening of the Ring of Remembrance of Notre Dame de Lorette. I uh, don't know why, um, and it was such short notice, uh, I thought I wasn't going to go, but I, I did go. I took my wife with me, and uh, that was a, a very memorable, memorable event um, for all kinds of reasons. Um, not least the fact that I, I actually got to meet the president and present him with the Craig Borough Council tie. Uh, so that was memorable, not, to, not least the fact for meeting him and also just getting to France for a few days with my wife. But I suppose uh, Belfast in, in 2012, uh, when we marked this signing of the Covenant, was, it was a huge event, huge, massive event. Uh, and again, passed off peacefully, no incidents whatsoever. Um, all strands of unionist society were there, uh, marking that important event. But I suppose uh, the last month, is, is, you know, to, to stand in France on the 1st of July, uh, to mark the tenure of the Battle of the Somme, probably with my family, probably be the most important uh, that stands out for me. But I think it's very hard to pick any of them out, particularly because they've all been very, very all of the events I've been to have been very well organised. Um, there's been a lot of very, very small events right across my local borough uh, where we've unveiled uh, little benches and things like that to mark events as well. Um, but uh, those probably are the, the public events that stand out for me the most. Um, from a personal perspective, um, I have Bought a, I recently bought a, lamb, a new lamb bag drum to add to my collection, and I have four, I had three before that. Uh, and I dedicated that to the memory of two relatives who died in 1917. So that was uh, an event I held uh, in June to, to, to mark that centenary of their death, although it's, it's next year. Um, so there's a whole, whole series of things, but yeah, it's, been, uh, it's important that we do it, and it's important that we continue to do it uh, right through to the formation of Northern Ireland. That, that, this is the image of the drum uh, and it's flattened out so when, I, when you actually look at the drum in real life it's actually on a curve so you really can't see it as clearly as that. I got this made for the event when I unveiled it. Um, the, two, the two soldiers in the middle, um, uh, the guy without the moustache is my grandmother's cousin, uh, rifleman Thomas Corkin uh, and the guy with the moustache is Lance Corporal Robert Sharpless who um, would be my grandmother's uncle through marriage. So they were those two gentlemen, our uncle and nephew, together. And w one of them was in the Connor Rangers, uh, which I thought was extremely bizarre, um, a unionist from Lurgan uh, in the Connor Rangers. Uh, and the guy on the right was in the Royal Irish Rifles, who were based in Lurgan. Um, but they both died within a, as you can see along the bottom, they both died within about two weeks of each other. Uh, and, and they're buried about three miles apart out, out in Belgium. 
So whenever I was coming, drawing together how I wanted this drum to design, I wanted it to tell a story. So uh, at the top, um, I put the Island of Ireland Peace Park, Messines, um, because that was to signify the Battle of Messines where they both died. Um, plus it also was significant in that it, it, it's the park that commemorates all the Irish men who, who died in the First World War. Uh, Robert Sherpless's name appears on the Lurgan War Memorial, which is up in one of the small circles, and Thomas Corkin's name is on the Portadown War Memorial, which is on the other side. Um, I chose the, the title for the drum for King and Country because one of the commanding officers wrote back to their parents of Thomas Corkin. They said he was a, a loyal Ulster man who died for King and Country. So I thought that was a good a title for it. Um, obviously, clearly the regiments are on it. The year they died, um, their the, the cap badges of the two regiments they were in. Uh, Brownlow House is an iconic emblem of Lurgan, um, where both men were from. Uh, the dates of when they died, the two cemeteries in which they buried. Uh, the townland of Moiraverty. Um, in modern day times, Moiraverty is a nationalist housing area in, in Craigavon, but it also is the townland, uh, and that's where the Corkin family uh, came from. So that's the connection between the, the two men. And then because, because Surplus fought or belonged to the 5th and 6th Battalion Connaught Rangers, he therefore fought uh, in the, the 10th and 16th Irish Division. So I thought it was important to commemorate the three uh, divisions um, as well. So as a tribute to the two men, it was also a tribute to all Irish men who fought. Um, and I suppose to some people in the Unionist community, they really just focus on the 36th Ulster Division. Um, Whereas I tend to be a bit more controversial and I'm very keen to, to celebrate all Irish men who who, who 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 gave their lives for their country. So that's that's what I've spent my thousand pounds on quite recently. <laughs>
they're just not as uh, up people's noses, if, if that's a better word. Um, they're done properly uh, and respectfully. Um, but I think it also creates a little bit of anger among people that they do feel um, annoyed that their school, their schools, their state, for some reason, um, they said not to educate them about the history. Uh, and they're now having to find it out through another means now, uh, when in their adulthood, when they should have learnt it uh, many, many years ago. Which may have, you know, who knows, may, may have stopped a lot of things happening in this country, uh, if they'd have known their history a bit better. I, th- th- I think it has been good from an educational point of view where, where I think that, uh, I think those who get the opportunity to travel to France and Belgium uh, appreciate more that this wasn't just about the 36th Social Division, it wasn't just about the UVF or Carson's Army. Uh, it was about Irish men as well as uh, Ulster men. Uh, and when you walk around the cemeteries and see Royal Dublin Fusiliers and all of these uh, names and words that would have been alien to them, um, I think they begin to realise uh, that there's more to their history than they appreciate. Now obviously well, the, the, I should understand that while Irish men laid down their lives for the British Empire they did so for maybe a different reason than what the Ulster men did. Um, but they still fought together side by side in the war and I, I think it has been a very positive, uh, it has been on those individuals who get that opportunity um, but it needs to be done more and more and I think uh, we have talked about the need for some sort of uh, initiative through education that schools get to go out there, primary schools or certainly junior high schools get to go out there and the children need to see this uh, um, so they're more informed and more educated uh, about the horror of war uh, uh, as well as um, this island's shared history uh, as opposed to this idea that uh, all the prods went to France and got slaughtered by the Germans you know, um, so I think um, that's the positive aspect of it, but it's not, there's not enough people learning it and understanding it. Um, the ones that go and come back uh, are of a different mindset than those that sort of still stay at home. You know. The events that, that have happened uh, in the Republic have broken down barriers. Um, my memories of that. it was last night in cemetery. Was there one there recently where, yeah, so th- things like that were, um, I think, let unionists see that the Irish government isn't afraid to acknowledge uh, and reach out the hand of friendship. And I think they've been very good at that um, for a number of years now. Uh, and they seem to be taking people with them. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a huge kickback against that uh, as long as it's done properly. Uh, and respectfully, I think uh, in France, um, I have been to ceremonies um, in the village of Guidamont, where you've had the French, British, and Irish national anthem all played uh, and all respected. Uh, and I think that's a good thing uh, and a very positive thing. Um, so yeah, the, the Irish government I think have been very good in, in, in making things as close as possible. Um, Maybe unionists haven't been that good at reciprocating uh, in some respects, but um, in, the, in their attendance. Uh, but certainly those events that have appealed to them, yeah, they've been very, very good. I suppose, I think, hopefully we can look back in 2016 and, and, and say you know, we marked, everybody's event got marked uh, properly and respectfully uh, without any incident. Uh, and. Hopefully nobody took any major offence by what was done uh, and let's hope that that's the way it continues. Uh, I'm sure there'll be other centenaries that are going to come up. Obviously in 1917, you know, again the whole First World War is there uh, again. Uh, 1918, the end of the First World War. Uh, obviously then we have the, 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 the formation of, the North, of Northern Ireland and I don't know how those are all going to pan out, but if, the, if it's done the way we've done it so far, hopefully everybody um, will be able to uh, appreciate it. I think probably the Northern Ireland will probably be the most difficult because um, nobody will, 
I show up because I'm not one to celebrate the formation of the Daniel repetition. <laughs> um, but if we can do it in a way that doesn't cause any offence, that would be good.